Welcome back everyone to our first unboxing since 2,500 subscribers. Uh, thanks a lot again everyone who's part of the tabletop team. Today we are going to be playing Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realm which is the new set to come out for Magic the Gathering Standard. And there's a couple of goodies in here. The most expensive one is the Lich. I believe that lets you play instant and sorceries from your graveyard if you exile a couple of cards, but it costs four blue pips, which is actually really good for devotion decks. We're just going to zoom this in a little bit more. And let's just have fun with it today, everyone. Oh, yes. There we go. We also want a couple of other cards too. Tiamat, along with the Gnaw Bone Dragon, which is the green dragon that creates a bunch of uh, treasure tokens. Look at that. Isn't that... Beautiful, look at this artwork. We really went all out on this, on the ink. If only they put as much effort into this cardboard as they do some of their other cardboards. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Mr. Uh, Foils, I'd like to curl after a day or two. Okay. Let us get started then. This one's actually really good as well, six euros I believe. In all honesty, it probably is a better idea to just divide singles, but there's fun in cracking packs and I do like enjoying it. I do enjoy <laughs> opening it up with all you guys back at home. So that is it. Oh, gelatinous cube. There we go. 40% of a foil land. Oh my God, look at this. Some of the uh, exclusive art cards that you can get from the set boosters and collector boosters only. Faradale, Devil's Chosen. This is a really nice one, though. I was planning on making a deck on him, but uh, he... Well, her, apparently, yeah. It's a him. He's a warlock, but he has a breastplate. Warlocks are men, right? You know what? I have to double-check that later. <laughs> Price of Loyalty. Uh, a ghoul. Deadly Dispute. We have some... Find some prisoners. Look at this. It's actually uh, really cool. You find some prisoners, and then you get to break their chains or interrogate them. So it's kind of like Choose Your Own Adventure. I think it's pretty nice. How about Pashto Rune Seeker? Pretty good inside a dungeon deck. What is this now? Grim Wanderer. Only when a creature has died, may it put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. A little bit better than the uh, other stuff that we have currently. I remember the closest one is from Strixhaven Zimana, uh, Strix, uh, something Prodigy. And she allows you to put a, a land down for one mana. Although she does have a draw power later on. Pretty good commander in Brawl. You and Team Allison, pretty nice. Deal common damage, Explore. Oh my god, the Gino <laughs> Windseer. Two in one booster pack. All right, I know that was a little bit slow, guys, but let's just uh, move it a little bit faster here. Because you know me, I don't really want our videos to last too long to the point where they're like grueling to watch. Look at this, one of the first dungeon cards. The uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, pretty nice. Comes at the back with a token. Oh, this is sweet, look at that. I thought they were just going to be single-sided. What's this? Why is this backwards? Why are they all backwards? Because <laughs> I went from the wrong side. Here we go. Okay, we've got a nice forest, and the forest has a little description on them as well. Under the uh, Night Wind, Neverwinter Dryad. Remember from uh, Neverwinter Nights, one of the IPs from Wizards of the Coast, or D&D &D in general. Got some Swarming Goblins. Terrible card for a deck rolling dice. Yeah, deck. I have to say, Prosperous Innkeeper, amazing life gain tool here. Pretty good with the Trisimima. Uh, Skull for Merchant. I hope we get Trisima. She's only an uncommon, so I assume we will get one from the thing. Uh, in terms of the Bards, pretty good. There are some cards that can do a little bit better, because it costs four tap and then put it into your hand, rather than put it onto the battlefield, which is what some people are complaining about. <laughs> Me in general, too. Okay, we got a Valor Singer. as a hollow. But Toon is usually chilling on my lap whenever we open up booster packs or other things like that. I would make a second camera where she's on my lap, but like, uh, I'd rather not have people look at my junk for too long. Okay. Got a Swamp. Goblin Javeliner. Brazen Dwarf. Brazen Dwarf is a pretty good card to copy. Earth Cult Elemental. It's okay. I tried to play it inside some of the uh, decks that I have, but his effect is an asymmetrical, so 50% of the time you're everyone's sacrificing one including yourself uh the other 48 percent is probably like uh, each opponent sacrifices a permanent and at five percent of the time an opponent sacrifices two permanents so i'm not too sure how i feel about that it's not exactly great to be honest hoarding troll amazing card though uh if you can give him haste or anything like that you roll and then you get the uh treasure back 
Targnar, Dima Fang, uh, Ray of Frost. If you guys would like to check out some of the stuff online, please be sure to check out my website at tabletop.ie. And Vulo! Vulo is amazing! Oh wow, I've done a, like, a series on him as well for the Magic Arena Brawl. He's actually a pretty good commander that I want to make one of inside the uh, actual game. And here is the green dragon, but not the green dragon I'm looking for. <laughs> Look at this. So for six mana, it's a four four flying with poison breath. Until end of when it enters the battlefield at the end of turn, whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt damage, destroy it. So this is the one's a little bit weird. You have to time it out very, very correctly. And this is oh my god, I really hope this isn't our only extended art card. That'd be that'd be horrible. No, it was in the foil slot, so I don't think it counts. <gasps> it's a card from the list. Yeah, the power level of this set in particular is pretty low, to be honest. It has, so they're trying to put everything down, like... Uh, I'm sure you guys want to appreciate the artwork of this. A lot of people are actually buying these things so that they can have uh, little art cards to go with their D&D &D adventures as well. Okay, Killeen Recluse Painter. Displacer Beast, which is, has the Enter the Battlefield effect of going into the dungeon. We've got a Blink, a Planar Ally. Pretty okay, not great. A grass and a dungeon descent. So four tap legendary creature control venture into the dungeon as a sorcery. Which I think is going to be a little bit better inside games that kind of get drawn out. Because then you can get more value out of it. Because you essentially get one third of a golos activation <laughs> later on. Put ye with all the rares. Stony school. Stony book schoolmaster. What's this? It comes tap. You may put a blue merfolk token into play. So not too bad. Token generation. Not the greatest one by far. Reminds me of Magda a little bit from the uh, Kaldheim thing where she becomes tap or whenever a... Oh, another card from the list. Whenever a card... Here's Tiamat, guys. Really want one of ye. So whenever a card becomes tap... Oh, Iron Golem. Reminds me of that movie that I watched as a kid that I cried at. Oh, I didn't cry. But it was a really emotional movie. And you guys know what it is. All the old people out there. Hashtag Iron Giant. <laughs> Got a nice little right. Enter the battlefield. Whenever a creature is dealt damage by a right dies this turn, create a 2 2 black zombie creature token and exile that card. So, this actually works a little bit well against tokens and whatnot, but it's very hard to kind of time correctly because it's, it's on instant speed or whatever it is. And you need some effects to let you fight. So, black isn't really known for that. They just outright destroy things. So, you're going to want some green in your life, a little bit of green or a way to flash it in. Orca Jelly, two rares. I have you guys know. Pretty decent. This has the uh, counter thing on it, as most oozes do. And our first mythic, two rares and a mythic. Morden Kynan. And this is a six mana drop Flameswalker, and he's hilariously okay. He's not great. So for plus two, draw two cards and put a card from your hand on the bottom of the library. Uh, create a blue dog illusion creature with this creature's power and toughness is equal to twice the number of cards in your hand. And minus ten. You can exchange your hand in library and, and then shuffle. You get an emblem with you have no maximum hand size, which is pretty decent if you can use a toss as oracle or to combo off with it. But uh, minusing the dog has a little bit of protection too. In any commander, you guys know that's pretty good. The problem is it costs six mana, and people are all very trigger happy with their freaking uh, mana drains here. So the list card is going to be Bellfire Liege. Not too bad, actually. Other red creatures get 1-1. One, one. Other white creatures get 1-1. One, one. Whenever you play a red spell, deal 3 damage to target player. Whenever you play a white spell, you gain 3 life. And remember, guys, if you have a white-black card like this, then he triggers twice. So you get plus 2-2, two, two, and then these two happen. Which is uh, very interesting, actually. Some people didn't know that. Like me. A very, a very long time ago, of course. Here's the gold dragon. You have a planes. Oh, a mimic. There we go. Loving these uh, old style rulebook things. Although some of the artworks are. Oh! Twinsies. Add a mana of any color. I think this one's going to be decently useful inside some sort of Prismari deck. Although there are some cards that are cost zero, so those will be better. Horde Robber, pretty good too. I'm not sure we said that already. Got a wild shape. Not too much of a fan of this one. Uh, Drew class, the classes, I forgot about that. The classes are really nice. Screw class in particular is pretty decent. Here's Gretchen as well that you can just uh, play for. And she's just a big mana sink because she doesn't have to tap in order to activate it, which I think is pretty neat. The Drew class as well, play a tree to basically have a dryad on the field minus the color correction. And for five mana, you can, you can create a giant 
big beefy creature. So it's not the worst thing to have late game nor early. Wizard class is one of my favorite ones though, as a turn one play. So you play it turn one, then turn three or two, you can just draw two more cards, which lets you get back in the game a little bit. And the last effect isn't as good inside Brawl. However, I think it's going to be much better inside uh, Commander. So the Innkeeper, mainly because there's just so much time there. Oh, Sorcerer class. I've seen this one before, but I haven't actually looked into it. Or I haven't seen people use it a little bit. So creatures you control have add blue or red. Spend this mana as any mana to cast instant sorceries or gain a class level. Okay, that's actually not too bad. So you can use it for itself. And, well, I mean, you can, but the next one's like five. Jesus Christ. Pretty good spell, though. I have to say, these cards are oriented towards late game. Pretty good. There's a Dog Illusion. For all you nice people at home wondering what the pupper is going to look like for the, uh, what's your man's name? Morda Cannon. Okay, so we got another Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Jesus Christ, guys. Dupes already. Oh. Odd. Very odd. Look at that. So we got Ice Force. The Genie. Windseer. Plummet. Nice little reprint there. The Arboreal Pegasus. Behold the Eye of the Beholder. I don't know. <laughs> Target creature gets minus 11, 11 the end of turn. So truly. I don't see why anyone would use that rather than just a outright removal spell. But I guess D&D &D people are going to love it. Appeal duel. But if you're one of the people who play D&D... Okay, High of the Eye of the Tyrant. I like some of these lands now. They enter in tap unless, you, unless it's the only other land plus one. So that's actually pretty good. These things transform into monsters that have little effects when they're attacking, which I think is pretty nice. Can come in very much clutch. And I do believe this one is... Uh, yeah, this one has Menace. There's a couple of ones that have Flying, and, and the blue one, I believe, is just giant, gigantic. <laughs> and there's a plus two mace attack. Uh, equip, get a two, two, and equip cost three. I think equip should have been, like, freaking two or something, just to keep with the team. And to be fair, the effect isn't that great, so I don't really see why it needs to cost three. But I digress, I digress. Look at these. Look at these things. Another foil card here. Oh, we got a blue dragon extended art now. Okay, isn't that pretty neat? Remember, these are only uncommon, so I'm guessing they don't count towards the uh, extended art version of it. So, Belf of Beholder. I really want the Kingpin, though. You guys saw the episode where I was, like, playing the game? Man. Kingpin is such a troll card, and I think he's actually really good in Commander, we got, but <laughs> he gets better as time goes on. He's basically like a, a kind of weird sort of a send triplet. So Graxa, Ilted Scholar, as a rare. Oh my god, I hate this. I This is actually real. Oh, I hate this so much. So this is based off the old D&D uh, &D textbooks. And so they look like uh, things that you can just... Oh, look at how glorious this is. It looks so tacky. I hate it so much. But I'm guessing some people will love it, but you know what? I'm just going to keep it for myself, because I do like having kind of rare cards in the pool. Alright. There is our Planeswalker. Got a little island here. Never went to dry it yet again inside this kind of uh, weird artwork. So, Teeth's Tool, Yuan Teal Fangblade, Shortcut Seeker, Sudden Insight, Nether Wizard class, not too bad, Magic Missile, uh, Rimshield Frost Giant, Underdark Basilisk, a Wish, which is actually pretty good, not in Commander, <laughs> horrible in Commander, because we don't really have a cyborg, uh, but it's okay, I think. I think Faye Wishes was a little bit better, because it costs... Like four to cast, but you can also recur it, whereas this one you can't. But this one isn't uh, limited to the turns either, so I think it's okay. So we'll put that over here with the rares and the life form over here. But one thing I can say about the wish that's better than failure wishes is that it actually allows you to cast it whenever you want. And it doesn't go into your hand, which kind of negates. Ooh, ooh, look at that. A, E. Which allows you to negate the activation 
Well, it allows you to escape a couple of things like a hen hate and stuff like that. So there will prowler. You hear something on watch, circle moon. Got a nice iron golem. Chaos Chandler. Decent card, decent card. Um, I've only used it a couple of times inside the Delina deck, but the times that I did, it was kind of it was a little bit lackluster because whenever it attacks, it rolls a d20, but Delina already has a tap, so it doesn't. It's, it's not attacking, so you don't really get the triggers on it, which is kind of sad. But you know what? It is what it is. Burning hands, pretty good. Delvis torch, see this quite a bit inside of venture decks as well. Skullport merchant, and a dancing sword. Dancing. Oh, our first mythic. Dancing Sword 2-1, and whenever it's destroyed, uh, while well, attached to a creature, you pay one, and uh, you create a 2-1 construct as well, which is pretty cool. And Mince Beloved Ranger, foil. Look at that. So when he TVs, you create Boo, a legendary 1-1, one, one, hamster token with trample and haste, and X until end of turn, t uh, target creature you control has base, power, and toughness XX, and becomes a giant in addition to their types. Which is actually pretty good. It works well in tandem with Boo. And we get a Midnight. Not too bad. Cost zero. Actually loving this card as well. I might make a commander deck for it. It's uh, It's nice that it makes a token that has haste and trample. Which it kind of can... It can catch people out. The problem I have with it is that I kind of wish that they took out Boo and then instead you're able to like... I don't know. Get trample and haste or something like that. Oh, this, this one's amazing. Oh, it's beautiful. If we're able to get her inside her alternate art form, that'd be great. Temple of the Dragon Queen. Oh my god, please just stop. Just stop. But man, I mean, I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm starting to get the pretty, pretty much uh, liking these things. So let me put this over here. Down here with all the other stuff. We have the Manticore. Also, it's to my knowledge that I've forgotten to turn on the camera, or the camera has suddenly turned off the front viewing one, so this one's just going to be in it. Not a very nice experience. Just uh, one on one with my voice and all of you guys at home. <laughs> Ray of Fuelman, Rogue Class, I think it's pretty neat. It lets you exile the top card of your opponent's library each time you hit them, and creatures you can control have menace, and then you can play the cards that you exile. I think this is a really strong class. I use it quite a bit inside the Brawl format, but I know some people are saying that it's ah, eh, it's it's I it's not bad, it's not good. I have to disagree. I think Rogue Class definitely has a has a place inside a lot of decks. Our last line of Vandelier. I kind of I keep forgetting that that's inside the thing. There we go. So we got a Silver Plains. So we got a Brewster Battlehammer. We have a higher text plate. Or robber, Thieves Tool, Teresa, about time. If we can get you inside the uh, alternate art version, then things will be just dandy. A very strong card, guys. Very strong card. So, Lurking Rope, Rally Maneuver, Leather Armor, Cave of the Frost Dragon, pretty good card. I keep, I get destroyed with this sometimes inside uh, Commander, or inside Brawl and whatnot, because it costs 5 mana, but turns into tree for a white dragon with flying. And the flying kind of catches me out. Because we can't really do anything about it. And the Hall of the Storm Giants. This actually this is one of the better ones as well. So it becomes a 7-7 giant with War Tree. Still land. Uh yeah, but if it doesn't have trample, then you're a bit mm, mm, a bit mm. If you're playing inside my pod or around my neighborhood, people just have, have tokens for days and chump blockers forever. I think the best use of it is so that you can use it during your turn. I mean, during their turn, when they're trying to attack you, and then you can just catch them out a little bit, but that's about it. Pixie Guide, Grand Advantage on Rolls, pretty good card. It's a little bit like the Barbarian class, which I think that we can probably get. It's only a uncommon, I believe, the Barbarian class is. So hopefully it won't be too expensive. Warlock class is pretty good as well. Let's you uh, get a Exquisite Blood at the last activation. Has a Herald of Hador, Eccentric Apprentice. And the Tarasak as the alternate art <laughs> mythic rare. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this card, guys. If you guys seen it around, I've tried playing a couple of decks with it, but I didn't make a video on it because it was just... Mm, didn't work very well. So he has Haste, Ward, 
10, and whenever whenever you cast it, and whenever it attacks, it fights target creature, defending player controls. Which is an okay piece of removal, but it doesn't have a way to reduce the casting costs, and War 10 is basically just, you know what, uh, no one can touch me, so it might as well be hexproof. So, well, let's see, let's see. You hear something in the watch, and another one of these stupid game cards that no one really uses. Okay, here's the barbed, or the barb. We have a Russ monster here, throwing it off very strongly. We have a Delver, some more of the Reclusive Planter. Got a nice Displacer Beast, Blink Dog. Have a Dwarven Champion, and a Warlock class. Layer of the Hydra, pretty decent card that can go very, very tall depending on your mana base. So I do recommend getting some of it because it does kind of win out games at the end. You guys are kind of edging it out. Kylie Recusive Painter. As our uncommon. Okay, so this is the Mind Frayer. Let's you control a target creature, as long as it's on the battlefield. Pretty decent card. If we can get one ourselves, that'd be even better. But I think it's at the rare slot, so it's not uh, outside the realms of possibility. Find some prisoners. Sharisha Death Whisperer. Virus, Silvery Moon Ranger. Pretty good card, actually. So the thing that kind of holds it back is that it's a once per turn trigger. So you're going to need something like Vivian in order to be able to flash it in, or just <laughs> maybe play a Leyland. Pretty nice commander, very niche thing, but I think it's a very, uh, it's a weird, oh, look at that. Here you are, in foil, so it is. Dominate monster, when it enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature for as long as you control mind player. Not too bad. A little bit expensive, depending on the uh, control effects inside commander but you know it works not bad to have works especially well inside of Ulo deck actually allows you to copy stuff I know by that point you kind of just want to run agent of treachery and stuff like that just to cover all the bases oh chiral boulders gate another commander that I was contemplating doing actually so when it deals combat damage to a player, that player loses one life, mill a card, then you gain one, and scry one. But whenever you attack, you may pay two, and if you do, a target creature can't be blocked, which kind of opens you up for a lot of shenanigans. Plus you decide the mirror color, so you know what, rogues are definitely a go-to in there. I think it works really good with a Zarid, actually. Then you can just steal stuff from their graveyard. Barrowin, pretty good card, ETBs, venture in the dungeon. When it attacks, return one target creature with mana value of three or less from the graveyard to the battlefield if you create a dungeon. So you want to like kind of speed run the dungeons just to get the effect. Choice there is okay as well. And minimum confinement. There are plus two mace. And here you are, Xantor Guild Kingpin. Isn't he beautiful? He's got an eye for beauty, I'll tell you that. So this one's actually really cool because at the beginning of your upkeep, choose the targeted opponent. Until end of turn, that player can't cast spells. You may look at the top of a card in their library anytime you, anytime you want, and you may play the card of top of their library, and you may spend mana as so those any mana to cast spells this way. Just gonna take a look at the very last card here first of all, which is the Contact Under Planes, and this one's actually really decent. It works in a lot of ways because it works at any spell, so you can kind of grab their lands as well, as well as playing their spells. Which I think is pretty neat. And you don't have to reveal it to your opponent. So they don't know what they're getting next turn. But you do. So the main thing you want to do with this is that you grab one of their lands, play all their spells, then leave them with a land. In this way, they have nothing else to do <laughs> during their turn. It works a lot better in a 1v1 setting. But to be fair, it, uh, it costs 6 and doesn't have any protection, no haste or immediate effect. Which makes it a little bit worse than some of the other options out there. But I think the effect is worth it uh, long term. And... Uh, I don't know. It's it's a it's a fun deck. I mean, it's, it's not one of those uh, you are definitely going to win the game deck, but it's fun. So aggression tick willow. You'll find the villain's lair, frog hermont. So it costs five, has haste and trample, and whenever he does combat damage to a player, you can exile up to that many cards from the graveyard. Put a one one on frog Muhammad. 
for each creature exiled this way. You gain one life for each non-creature card exiled this way, which is actually pretty good. So you can have a lot of a graveyard hate there. A little bit like the scavenging ooze, but I think ooze is a lot better. Oh, oh, hello, hello. And one green for each creature you control. So circle of dream drew. It's basically Gaia's uh, Gaia's cradle on a monster. Pretty decent card. I think that's gonna definitely go up in value later on. And stone hewer giant as well. Okay, for one and a white, search your library for equipment, put it on the battlefield, attach it to the creature you control, then shuffle your library. This is an amazing card, if not for the fact that it's from Double Masters, and I opened up, like, freaking how many boxes of those? Wizards, please. Please, we don't need reprints of recent sets. It's a feels bad whenever you get one of those, uh, rare cards, but it's from the set that you've already invested so much in. I have a complete set of double masters, except for the box toppers, because those things are expensive. I'm not paying a hundred bucks for like a force of will. Crazy. Okay, have a pasture. Guardian of Fate has flash vigilance, enters the battlefield. Any number of target creatures you control phase out. Pretty good. Treasure Vault, equally very nice as well. XX uh, sacrifice treasure vault, create X treasure tokens. And I know this is a bit expensive, but you can kind of set yourself up for other turns. And you have the uh, well, way to playing stuff out of your graveyard, graveyard, like Crucible of Fate, pretty decent. And it just gets a lot better with token doublers, like a Nolan Procession. I definitely think this is one of the better cards that are simple, but it, it works really well if you can get it uh, to the stage that you need it to be. Unexpected Windfall. One of my uh, favorite cards from the uh, common slot, actually. So discard a card, disc uh, draw two cards, and create two treasure tokens. It's a little bit like a Seize the Spoils but it creates one extra treasure in exchange for costing one extra. But also, in return for that, it turns into an instant instead of a sorcery. So you can kind of use it on your opponent's turn, which I think gives it more versatility and makes it a lot more useful than Seize the Soils. But, of course, that depends highly on the deck that you're playing. If you're running, like, uh, the Chandras to kind of generate mana, it might be better just use Seize the Soils just so you can activate things during your deck, during your tank. I did not notice that there was a... Uh, is this on all of them? You have the classes and everything? Let me look. No, no, some of them have it. Some of them have it. Just the one with the creatures. Oh, I gotta double check that later. Why? Why you do this? Okay. There's your Windseeker. Pixie Guide. Contact Under Planes. Sudden Insight. For ourselves a nice little wizard class here. Matching Missile. Okay, Platinum Shield. Grim Wanderer. Den of the bug bear, not too bad. It becomes a tree too, and whenever it attacks, creates a 1 1 goblin, still land. So, not too bad. Pretty good for goblin decks, I would assume. I know goblin decks have a lot better payoffs at a lot cheaper prices. Ooh, there's a card from the list, guys. And here, nope, an island, evolving wilds. Oh wow, it's so ugly, I love it. Okay, Jade Sword Cell, Improvised Weaponry, Unexpected Windfall, Iron Golem, Chaos Chandler, Burning Hands, Kick in the Door. See the guards, and Oswald Fiddlebender. Pretty, pretty nice card here that works so well. And um, so. For a white, you can tap him and sacrifice an artifact you control. So, search your library for an artifact with mana cost equal to 1 plus D sacrifice artifact's cost, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle. Activate only as a sorcery. Pretty decent card, you guys will see. Can get out of hand. Solemn some Alacrum can turn into some sort of gigantic 5 drop artifact, and it's just, it's amazing. Although, as mono white, he's inherently a little bit weaker, but uh, they've gotten a lot better with it recently. Got a nice and low will o wisp that can regenerate itself as a flyer. Put ye over here. Yeah, Mono White has gotten like a lot of support recently. Which I find very, very cool. It's about time they kind of corrected things a little bit and make all the colors kind of vile. Got like a nice celestial unicorn. Okay, guys. We're just gonna speed through a little bit here because we've already seen the majority of them. Here's Cradal or Cradle at Boulder's Gate inside his normal artwork. Split the party. Never split the party. You're ambushed on the road. Lurking rope. 
minion of the mighty, an okay card inside like a uh, dragon dex, because it does allow you to put a dragon from your hand on the battlefield if, if you attack with five power or more, and it has menace too, so it can kind of generate a little bit to that. Got a nice little fireball, and we got Zora Spider Queen token over here. Okay, and the thing on the back of you, Island, Pixie Guide, Morden Count and Polymorph. We have a Dragon's Fire, Jade Cell Sword, Guild's Teeth, Critical Hit, Barbarian Class. Oh, I was getting worried. I was getting worried. It's a very key part of my deck, or the uh, any uh, dice rolling deck that, is, that has red anyway. Oh, High with the Eye Tyrant. You control two or more lands. Hive of the Eye Tyrant enters the battlefield tapped at, red, at black, and for four, it becomes a tree tree beholder to creature with menace, and whenever this creature attacks, exile target card from defending player's graveyard, still land. And this one's actually an okay tech to have, if they're not suspecting it, then you can just play it, and you can just turn it into the, the big uh, tyrant himself. And what's good you do? You take away their Uro, you take away their Croxa, stuff like that. And we got a foil treasure vault, oh wow. Pretty, pretty happy with the deck so far. Really hope we get the uh, green Gnawbone Giant card. Oh, here you are. What, this one doesn't have it? Okay. Alright. Not you, Mr. Green Giant. The other Green Giant. Improvise Weaponry. Okay, let's keep going, let's keep going. Price of Loyalty. Trisha's Death Whisper. Power Word Kill. Okay card. At instant speed, destroy non-angel, non-demon, non- Devil and non creature dragon. If you have a, uh, if you're against a deck that runs any of those, yeah, not the best thing to have. Oh god, we got a regular version of you. I hate you so much. What's wrong with you? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Although big stoppy creatures go, bleh, it's still okay. Still okay. I think we're nearing the end now. Should be fine. Should be fine. Got a nice little doggo. Blink dog. Look at that. Let's be confused with my good friend, cat dog. Dire power. You see the guard approaching. Bull strength. Shocking grasp. Godrich, devil's chosen. Mind sorcerer. Power persuasion. Hobgoblin captain. Steadfast paladin. And a wizard spellbook as a rare card. I think this is one of the only cards that lets you... Uh, tap and then do it without paying a mana cost actually and it's in blue it's in blue i have the beholder and another devil come on man one t i'm at that's all i'm asking for carve in the list enlightened tutor did they take out the line tutor i'm not too sure forest pegasus Ghoul, Shambling Ghost, Dungeon Crawler, Arwen, got a closer Gargoyle, Dueling Raptor, Rallying Maneuver, Werewolf Pack Wolf is okay for a 2-drop, let's draw a card if you attack with 6 power or more, which is kind of doable, and <laughs> very much doable instead of green deck, and, but he himself doesn't have to attack, so you can just put it in whenever you have 6 power on the field, attack with the arrow, get some more advantage, and then we have Dragon's Fire, and a Veil of Summer. Oh wow, Veil of Summer is actually a really, really good card. One of my favorite cards of all time, actually. And it was banned inside a... Not a Commander. It was banned in Standard and it was banned in Brawl. No, no, it was st it's still legal in Brawl. It's just banned in Command. And it's, it's banned in Standard, sorry. And the Historic, because of how efficient it is. One drop. All your cards are now uncounterable. And draw a card, just for the lulls. Got a reclusive painter inside her altered art form. Pretty dice. Pretty dice. Haha, <laughs> you get it. So here's a trickster. Whenever you roll one or more die, create a 1 1. Have a trickster's talisman. Pretty good as well. Whenever a quick creature attacks, it gets a 1 1. And whenever this creature deals combat damage, you can sacrifice the trickster's talisman to create a copy of this 
creature, which is actually pretty good. It's a very low bar entry for cloning. But it does take a little bit of time in order to activate and they can just instant speed remove. But that's true of anything. Boots of speed, pretty good. I gotta remove my glass slipper because this one is better. Oh wow, Delina, Delina! I'm gonna make a deck out of you so hard. She's actually so, so, so fun to play. If you guys want, you can check out my video on Delina Wild Mage and Brawl. But you can kind of see the aspects of her that can make her extremely powerful later on in the game. I'm actually not too fussed now because that was one of the only rares that I wanted. Oh wow. We have a nice little mountain. A bullet. Find the pat. A little giant albear. A rope. Fly. It's okay. Centric apprentice. Celestial unicorn. Dragon turtle. Not too bad. One of the okay dragon cards that I've actually been using quite a bit inside Brawl. Aceric, the Our Lich. They are the Arc Lich. So ETVs uh, creates, uh, enters, the, enters the battlefield and he bounces back to hand unless you create a dungeon already. Whenever he attacks for each opponent, you create a 2 2 black zombie unless that player sacrifices a creature. So they have tokens, not really that useful, but if they don't, you create like a tree zombies potentially. And that just has the potential of the snowball out of control. Okay. That's good as a field of the dead, but I think they learned their lesson from that. But you know, a 5-5 five, five, a tree mana, not bad, not bad. Ooh, got the Beholder. Really? We don't have the Beholder details here, that sucks. Rhyme Shield, Frost Golem, Devour Intellect, a Grim Bounty, a Mimic. You'll find some prisoners. Hama, Pasha, Ruin Seeker. We have a very, very nice Grim Wanderer. Armory Veteran, 50 feet of a rope. Here's a Fighter Class, one of the ones that are pretty good inside, well, equipment decks as you guys can tell. Boros is definitely uh, the color for Voltrons. Oh, uh, equipability you activate costs two less to activate. Might as well make it free at this point. Oh, then again, there are other cards that's like the Colossal Hammer or something that costs like 10. But it's a 10-10, but you lose flying. Which is not really a concern. Okay. Got an island. A Basculus. Isn't the Basculus the thing that Harry found inside the Chamber of Secrets? Drider, Divine Smite. Monk with the open hand. Pretty good with your man. Master of Flowers. Fly. Mind Flyer. Inside the Altair artwork. Pretty sick. Pretty sick. And a Mordicum Polymorph. Reaching our last booster pack here. I know it's been a very long journey, but thank you for sticking around for the end of the video. And the very last booster pack, it means a lot. And I had a lot of fun opening it up with all you guys, and I hope you guys had fun too. Here we are. Sorry about the camera, I forgot about it. But we'll fix it next time. Compelled Duel. A Basculus. Spare Dagger. Dermogorgon's Clutches. A Moon Blessed Cleric. Got a Cleric Class. Okay, guys. Last pack magic. Can we do it? Great Axe. We got Vulo! Oh, wow. Another card that I love. You always want to check out the video that I did on him. He's such a trolly card. Whenever you cast a creature that doesn't share a creature type with a creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, copy that spell. So already humans and wizards are off the table. I play them in such a way where we just manipulate our graveyard. But let's see here, Gravelin, Goblin Javelaner, and I and a Hammer Mage. Not too bad. The Struggle Artifacts with Converted Mana Cost X or less. This is, this is actually pretty good, actually. <laughs> Was hoping to get one of these as well. Javelin thing over here, but Vulo guys, Vulo! Alright guys, just before we sign off, I'm just going to show you all the kind of mythic pulls that we got. As you can see here, the mythic and rares, too many cards to kind of list true. But we got a Mordekin Kynan, a Minsk Beloved Ranger, the Xanatar Guild Kingpin, the Tarask Mythic Alternate Art, the Tarask Normal Art, Accelerate, 
the uh, Arch Lich. And I think those are the only things that we managed to get that were of Mythic. So six Mythics inside a box. Not the end of the world, but not perfectly great either. I'm okay with this kind of uh, outcome. I will say though, this reminds me, like, uh, I'm missing the Eye of Vecna from this guy, along with the Hand of Vecna, which I'm hoping to buy later on inside the cycle once singles get a little bit cheaper. But that is our video for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to give a big thumbs up. Sorry again about the face cam. We'll fix that for next time. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. And if you can, leave a comment down below for the uh, for the algorithm telling me what, uh, what trading cards are you looking forward to in the next uh, coming sets. Until next time, everyone. Thanks for watching.